Hey everybody, last time I posted a video of me dropping a tree, I got a lot of questions, so I thought I would provide a little bit of director's commentary this time. This is about a 60 or 70 foot tall dead pine tree that was sitting right next to my driveway. My house is actually right behind the camera, so I needed to make sure that I fell this in the right direction. And unfortunately, the tree was leaning in the wrong direction. It was leaning toward my house, so I actually need to fell it into the woods, as you can see, away from the camera and away from my house and everything else that I want to keep safe. So the tree is leaning the wrong way, which means this is going to take a little bit of time for me to get this down and do it correctly. Right now, I'm cutting the notch in the front of the tree. This is basically setting the hinge that the tree is going to fall down. Roughly a 70 degree notch, more or less, is what I'm aiming for. You can see I'm kind of taking my time to make sure that I get this right uh, before I move on to the next step. So at this point, the front face of the tree is open. I've got that 70 degree notch set. And now what I'm going to do is set a boring cut or a plunge cut, which is basically where you just send the saw directly into the side of the tree. Uh, that may sound easy, but it's actually a little bit tricky for a couple of reasons. One thing, the saw is constantly bucking and trying to kick out of the tree. Uh, it's both trying to kick to the right as you're plunging it in, and it's also trying to push itself back out again because of the spin of the chain. So you kind of need to stick your knee against it and just shove it in the tree there. It's also really important that you get this exactly precisely lined up with the hinge that I've already set before. And there's no levels on saws or anything like that. You just kind of need to eyeball it, which is why you see me taking my time and looking around and making sure that I get this right. Unfortunately, the tree is actually wider than the bar of my saw, which meant I had to do the plunge cut from both sides, in from one side, and then turn around and do it back from the other side as well. And again, really important that these two cuts meet in the middle in a perfect way, so again, taking my time, making sure I get both cuts set just right. So at this point, there's the wedge at the front, which is where the tree is going to fall over the notch. And then at the middle is all cut out of the tree that gets rid of all the stress in the middle of the tree. With a tree that's leaning like this, they can tend to kind of blow up when they fall over. It's called a barber chair. If you want to scare yourself, look at uh, tree felling barber chair on YouTube videos. Uh, which is where trees just kind of explode, and it's a really good way to, way to kill yourself. So by cutting out the middle, you get rid of that problem. And at th this point now, there's about an inch and a half of wood left at the back of the tree that's holding it up in theory. Uh, but since it's leaning the wrong way, I actually need to use wedges to make it fall over. So I've got a couple of wedges I've stuck in the sides of that cut that I just made. And I'm realizing that the, uh, the little hatchet I was using was not big enough to drive the wedges in. So I went and grabbed my maul to push those in a little bit harder. So right now I'm basically just setting those wedges in place and making sure that they are set so that when I cut the back of the tree out, at this point the tree won't fall in the wrong direction. Um, the little piece of wood left in the back is called the trigger, and normally when a tree is leaning the way that you want it to fall, when you cut this trigger the tree will just immediately fall right over. But again, because the tree is leaning the wrong way, I need to take that trigger out and use those wedges that I've set in there before to actually basically push the tree over. So at this point, the trigger's been cut. There's only about an inch and a half or two inches of wood left in the middle, which is basically controlling the tree. And now I'm going to use these wedges to push the tree up and over. You'll see that I'm basically taking small taps, looking up, a few more taps, looking up. That's because there are a few dead branches above, and I really don't want those to come falling on my head, so I'm doing this kind of gingerly. And you can also see as I drive the wedge on the left, the tree actually moves to the right. As I drive the right wedge in, the tree moves to the left. You're basically, again, jacking the tree up, and I need to lift it up and over that tipping point to get it to lean the right way and then fall the direction that I want it to. At this point, I'm noticing that the hinge is actually a little bit too thick. The tree is starting to split in the middle, which again is a little bit of a dangerous situation. So I'm just going to clean up the side of those hinges a little bit, just to make sure that it, when it does fall over, the tree doesn't split in half and break as it's coming down, but it'll basically just fall in a controlled way. And once it hits the ground at that point, then that hinge that I've set will break, which is what I want. So again, now back, tapping in those wedges, tapping in the wedges, trying to be patient, making sure those branches are not going to fall on my head. Uh, and then finally... There we go. So I had a real narrow window to get this tree to fall down. I knew there was one branch that was going to catch, as you can see, but I didn't really want the tree to get hung up. Uh, that's a bad thing if you drop a tree and it gets stuck in another tree. You've basically just doubled your workload. But it went down safely exactly where I wanted it. Uh, so there you go. Don't try this at home, kids.